needs to go a little bit. He did get the snooker. Has him elevated over the pink four, making things more difficult. And being elevated, I'm not so sure really what he has. He can get at it real first, but extension code. Kind of awkward to get any speed on this being over the pink four. Maybe he tries to nip this ball. All right, he's looking at the kick, and I would too. I think he can get at it real first, you know, right before the red three, but really can't do much with it. So trying to get a little separation. Oh, great hit. Great hit. Watch out, nine ball. It was tracking right on line, but not enough juice. Now it appears the pink four does play by the seven, so Max will probably ignore the nine ball that will be in the corner of his eye up there near the top left corner. Extension code. Probably cuts the three in and tries to play some position on the pink four. Interesting, though, he's got to kind of go with a high ball, so speed here, very crucial. And a very comfortable swing there. A uh, little overcut, little decel, a little bit there. Just a hair of a let up. Now that technical principle applies in pool and in snooker. When you see decelerations, the ball is overcut. Yeah, with outside spin, inside spin, it's in pool, it's usually hit a little thick. One thing I was going to say that was a common theme to some upsets in the first round was keeping control. And I think Niels is trying to do that with his safety play. Just the pink four got away there. Oh, what a shot. What a shot. Had to land on top of that pink four. Not terrible, but he's kind of got to roll it. Interesting, too. Very elevated, so he must be stunning the ball. Yeah, and that's a sign of nerves to me, not leveling out and rolling that ball in. It's been a mistake strewn rack, and that could be the final mistake. This is that angle I was talking about, Phil. So it's kind of one of those racks he had to settle on a lot of position shots and take a little more on. This being another. Boy, he really settled here, Phil. That's what you call being conservative, but will it pay off? Well, it's a little funny. I mean, drawing the ball around the nine is the comfortable way to pocket this ball. That's what he's going to do. But this could get away from him. That's the problem when you keep leaving yourself missable pots. You paid forward eventually. You'll cut yourself out. Yeah, the position on the purple five just led to a little out of line on the six, a little more out of line on the seven, and then we all saw a difficult eight. And I was going to say the timeout couldn't have come at a better time for Niels, and certainly that missed eight even more so. To say that winning a fourth rack in a race to 11 is a lifeline, that might be an exaggeration, but it was... It may 
get a nice little bump here. snooker there. It's going to be another two rail skate most likely. Bottom cushion left long rail into the two. And in day one Phil we didn't see a lot of tactical battles. We saw a game here and there that had a few but there's really a lot of break and runs. Someone getting control early and playing well to clear the table now in our first quarter final. We've seen a ton of safeties. Good speed there. Yes, and these safety bounces come very early in the match. Sometimes you see them that have to be respected most are these side pockets. No inaccuracy is tolerated. Yeah, and it's easy to be a little intimidated especially from these small angles. Okay, I'm not sure what he's playing here, is he? I was going to say, is he playing a cross corner bank with a big pocket? What a shot. What a shot. It went in clean field, but he knew he had some gutters on the side with that purple five. So getting creative here early and maybe a good sign of getting loose. The one thing we've seen from Neil so far is, is trying to stay aggressive, which is again a good sign. Between the eight and nine with the cue ball. Really good. And he's got a couple options here. He can kick to the left long rail. He can kick softly. And a lot of ways you hit the purple five, you can use the green six in a snooker kind of manner. Now he could go firm trying to hit the, the five, the purple five nice and full and banking it away. But I like the soft kick here myself, of course. It's something you have to be comfortable with. He's hitting the high ball, so he's trying to hit it full. Yeah. And a lot of guys will play it that way. It's a little higher percentage. It does require that good execution. So many hooks in this rack alone. And I like this kick shot here. You're, it's kind of you're right in line with it, so you like your chances, and you're kicking towards congestion. The lower right corner is open like that. I think the earlier jump shot has been supplanted. That was the shot of the match so far. Again, a lot of congestion around the rack area. And this type of shot, you know, this one here, he should play comfortably into the side. It's not easy, but this is where those tougher side pockets start to become maybe a hair mental. don't think he comes out for the side pocket for the blue two. I don't think so anyways. I think that's risking a miss. Maybe just take the blue two up in the upper left. Yeah, and I think that was just all between the ears feel, huh? You know, it's exactly the same in snooker. You look at a table and you think that kind of shot is simple for these guys let me tell you it isn't 
these pockets are unforgiving, and if you hit that near jaw, you are toast. Follow straight through it. Oh, well, he almost made it. And that was never the intention. He's trying to put the two up the table. Lechner needs something positive, needs to get going, needs to get the Q-arm lubricated. Yeah, and he's got to hit this easy, I think. I mean, he could come across with the cue ball trying to let the red three escape after the seven's made, but looks like to me the light stroke is the play. He played it to come down. Should be okay now. things have transpired he can't afford any mistakes hard to imagine any will be forthcoming especially now natural to me. Extension code. Just a reminder, it's a 30 second shot clock with one 30 second extension per player per rack in Max Lechner electing to take his extension right here. Oh. oh dear me. Dear me, Jeremy. Yeah, and he made a, he changed his positional decision there. He was definitely going to come behind the purple five when he first got down. He looked at that and then decided to kill the cue ball with a little check side, and it cost him the pink four. You can see Neil's noticing the object ball immediately, starting to make a move. Nine covered up the long rail, so limited options. All right, a couple different types of shots. Man near me, SVB. I know what he would do here. He would play the five and come to the side rail, the bottom rail, and then back up on the six. I think Niels is just going to come across twice like that. I'd like to see what the ball's pocketed number is from that 3-0 deficit that Neil started out with. It's something pretty astronomical, I think. He definitely looks the more settled of the two. And this is another time where the draw stroke, he's going to go with a high ball. On this slick table, a lot of the players like to draw out of this position. Uh, he hit it nicely. How about this for a turnaround? The veteran is now only three racks away from being victorious. It's the first time in the match. Decided to go at the nine last moment. Mm -hmm.
Caught it a little thick to the pocket, so it cost him a little cue ball movement. And now right in between. He's got to float it. I think four rails is uh, asking a little much on the cue ball. When you've been this round as long as Mills fine, you're able to read the vibes of your opponent and he knows right now. Lechner. Crestfallen. Annoyed. Vulnerable. Yeah, and you don't see it much from Max, even in some big moments when we've seen him struggle at times. Really kept it together between the ears and the fatigue after the match from Niels and really a body blow there. But back in it here, the Whirlpool Masters. Oh, cue ball's going to get lost, maybe. No, it's above. Does have a shot on the blue, too. The red three coming around for easy position. And all things considered, this layout should take the Terminator to the hill. Nothing really too difficult, just got to work through the rack. Oh, the, the scratch oh again for the second oh, time. Start the clock, please. Well, we all know the saying, it's now or never. Certainly that for Max Lechner. Uh, return of the cue ball, the nine heading towards the side Gosh. pocket and the two oh, in front hands. of it. This could be curtains here, Phil. Start the clock, please. Surely it will be. And that curtain will fall on Max Lechner. Yeah, we talked about often the scratches instead of the golden breaks, and there we have it. Yeah, 2-9 from Neil Fine. It was basically a given, wasn't it, in the end? And I think one has to say over the whole piece, he very much deserves to go through. He progresses to the semi-finals, does the Dutchman, the 46-year-old. He defeats Max Lechner by 11 racks to 6. This was the decisive shot when the white went in and they lined up like that. Lechner knew his fate. He knew he'd be heading back to Austria. See the potting angle. Can he see enough of the eight to pot it? Tricky. I would say he can't. Well, he's kicking at this. He's trying to kick it in the other corner. Has, it, has he fluked it? It's going near. Well, Victor Zelinski has dodged one here in the first rack. He really has. How's he going to win this first rack? How on earth has Viktor Zelinski won this rack? The miss on the two, then the miss on the seven, which was actually far worse. Oh, well, you know what? It's almost an appropriate way for that rack to end. Well, when you were speaking then, Michael, I was, I was wondering if the natural angle was going to go near the middle. He wasn't Can out of just yet. He didn't get on the nine correct, did he? No, well, the previous shot had looked a bit nervy, and when you're coming in and out of the pocket like that, that really gets highlighted. Well, what an extraordinary start that was. A rack that wouldn't look out of place in the local pub. James Aranas has won it. 
That's a rule I've never understood, Michael, you know. You don't see it often. He roared out into a 3-0 lead over Francisco Sanchez Ruiz and was capitalising on the opportunities he was being handed. One all here. Ball stroke. Ball in head. And please start the clock. Boy, this is difficult. Well, he did play the pot, and he's missed it by a long way. he's going to do one of two things he's going to help him settle down because this is a tough one again he's striking down so he's going to have to be going clean yeah that'll help him settle down That the fact that he's knocked a long ball in just three balls remain Michael where could go into the break leading 2-1 when he could have easily lost all three as FSR did against the same opponent in similar circumstances yesterday well Aranas had his chance here Got himself out of position. It kept building up to the point where he gave up control of the table. And Zelinski having trailed 1-0. Oh, well, that'll help. Golden break for Viktor Zelinski. And all of a sudden, all the struggles he was going through only about 10 minutes or so ago, starting to phase into the distant memory. He's got a bit of daylight at 3-1. It's early stages, but it's already starting to feel like one of those contests that's going to be close for most of the way, but somewhere along the road, someone's going to find a bit of momentum for three or four racks, and that will be the decisive factor. Yeah, this seems to be the modern day way of playing nine ball. Doesn't want to be straight. Does not want to be straight just because he's got to get the cue ball away from the rail a little bit so he can pop the eight. Yeah, you can see. It's well, he's got a better view from where he will be, but he's definitely going to get this cue ball off a little bit. Oh, that was a nice shot. Very underrated what he's done there. He's played a hard, stun run-through shot, and that just creates a little bit more angle. Yeah, you're having to force it a bit, and it isn't the sort of shot you want to be playing when you're struggling with nerves, so the fact that he was able to execute it suggests he is starting to feel more settled now. And why not, really, with the way he's taken his chances now in consecutive racks? Started this one with a dry break. But it's not how you start the rack. It's how you finish it. And he's ended that one by potting the nine to draw level at three all in this quarter final. has come down and back up but has neglected to pot the seven well, it's a rare day at this level that you 
break dry two racks in a row and win them both, but it's a possibility now for Aranas. And even more so after that shot. These cue balls keep going, otherwise it's one of these little straight shots again. Well, Victor must be sat there thinking, oh, if I miss these balls, he backs himself as probably one of the best potters on the circuit, but he has not shown up today in that department, not yet. Oh, this has gone wrong. This has gone wrong. Well, I say it's gone wrong. You could probably only really get there. It was the previous shot. He just got too much into the cue ball. Now he's got a tester. Surely he's got to put this one away. You can't Extension, afford please. to be not punishing your opponent's mistakes, Michael, can you? Big moment coming up. I know it's still early days, but you just feel like this is a big, big shot. Oh, well done. And for the first time since he took the opening rack, James Aranas is ahead in this match. Is he having a look at the pot? Well, missed a lot of balls. He went for it. He's missed it. I think James, well, he can play safe off this. He could also play the bank. That would be very adventurous. The safety's guaranteed to leave distance on the safety. And now Zelensky's talking to himself, and that's always a very bad sign. Yeah, he's playing safe. I don't blame him. Try and get the cue ball behind the nine. Didn't do a good job of that, but he's left that distance, and... He knows Victor's feeling out there. He knows he's struggling. However, if the young man does win this rack, it's only 5-4 with the mistakes he's done. That would be that would be amazing. 6-3 is probably a, a fair reflection. He's going for his shots, though. He's going for the shots. Wow, it's gone in. I thought that I'd missed at first, but it just slid in. It was clearly the right pace. This is tough, though. Oh, well done. It was tough, but the way he played it made it look anything but. He'll be left kicking himself, really. Had a great chance to lead by three. Bad miss on the six. And through one thing and another, it's all ended up with Zelinski ending Aaron Ass's run of four in a row. He's back to only one behind at 5 4. Oh, yeah, it's meandering all over the place, isn't it? Yeah, it seemed to just hug the rail, didn't it? It was not going to go in, but the fact that it hugged the rail, it made it go in, but that's a beautiful kick save to there from the Filipino. Shot Just can't get any momentum going. Had a great year in 2022. Zelinski won over $130,000. Spent six or seven times more than he'd ever won in a full year before. Oh, what's going on with him and that two ball in that corner pocket? Michael, I've never seen a match where the top players missed so many easy balls. This has been incredible. And more of the bad body language.
seven five down. This looks to be okay, you know. He's got a shot on the two three combo. error that is a big big error that was not a difficult combination yeah absolutely not perhaps in the category of some of the mistakes he made earlier but all day long you'd expect him to get that yeah where the three ball was sat michael it was dead straight so all you had to do is pop the two in the center pocket so if we do get another look at the replay what's the line the two ball takes it's not going near the center of the pocket it just feels like every time he gets a little bit of a foothold, he goes and does something like that, and that's why he can't get any momentum going here. Please. You could also bank the one back up towards the four. The eight ball is in the way of maybe getting in behind the brown seven, but at least he would get distance. Playing it slower, trying to get in behind these, and this is what I mean. I think a little different. That was a neat little shot he played, and what he's done there as well is he's opened the purple five and the six back up. Victor should hit this, of course. May play it soft and try and get in behind the seven. Oh, right at a rail. No rail after contact. So it's a foul. After contact, unless you pot a ball, you must hit and a rail. He was trying to hit the one on the way through off one rail, and then the cue ball would come back off the rail in behind the seven. And you see, no rail after contact, ball in hand. Feels like everything that can go wrong in a pool match has happened to Viktor Zelinski today. Only because he's only going to get one chance at this. You know, he's in the quarterfinals, and once this match is over... Oh, I was a little bit scared of the cue ball there. He's been a bit fortunate. He needs it, though. He needs that bit of luck. Yeah, Tony Drago, who you referred to there from Malta, former World Snooker Championship quarter finalist and ranking event runner up, who veered more towards pool when his best days were behind him in snooker and became one of the best in the world. Won this tournament, in fact, 20 years ago. Oh, wow, look at that. And again, it just sums up his afternoon. Every time it looks yeah. like he's starting to get something going, something like that happens. Yeah, this has been a complete meltdown. It really has. I think, in fairness, I'm not saying he would have potted it, but it did look a little heavy, the contact. Yeah, I thought that too, actually. But you don't really usually see that in in nine ball. The heavy contact really don't usually affect it like it does in the other Q sports. Well, you see it less and less in other Q sports now, actually, with the modern conditions. So it's a rare thing if that was what happened. Yeah, and also like the, the the new brands of chalk have seemed to have taken the kick away. I've noticed Victor's using a blue chalk, an, an older style chalk. But listen, at the end of the day, it didn't look like he cued the ball very nice anyway. So may have been a combination of the two things. This is very thin, though. He's got to pay attention to this. This is very thin. Yep, he's missed it. Believe me, that was very, very thin, what he was faced with there. Well, Victor, you are still in this match. Well, this whole rack now is summing up the afternoon. Zielinski getting his chance to build some momentum. Makes a bad mistake. But Aranas not punishing him to the full. And even in spite of that bad miss on the seven, whether it was a bad contact or not, 
Zelinski is going to end up winning the rack anyway. Quite unbelievably, he still has a genuine chance of winning the match. It's 9-6. Most remarkable of all. And he still can call. Yes, we've seen golden breaks this week. A timely one for Victor would be... Oh, it would be incredible timing. Aye, aye. Oh, Carl, what did you know? That's why they call me the voice, Michael. It's his second golden break of the match. Carl, unfortunately, did not quite have time to go and put a bet on it happening. And we're just more stunned than we've been by anything else we've seen this afternoon. That is absolutely amazing, Carl. And I think that brings us to 11 for the tournament. This is how most of them have happened with that cue ball going to the side cushion, coming back and knocking the nine into that pocket. And what a... Nine balls moving. The nine balls moving. It's close. It's close. Oh, he's got it. He's done it again. It's his third golden break of the match. What a way to draw level. And the look on the face of James Aranas says it all. And incredibly, Carl Zelinski's now a big favourite to win this one. Zelinski hasn't been in front in this match since it was 3-2. Is he going to sneak out? It is. I don't think he's got it. He's let the cue ball sneak out. What a mistake. Well, you can say what you want. The fact that this match, in such a short space of time, Michael, has got it to 9-9. You can feel the tension. You really can. I'll put it this way, whoever loses now is going to be absolutely sick because of the respective stories they've had this afternoon. Easy to bounce. Well, he played that posit positively. Many a players would have just played it off the one rail. Not for James. Wanted to put a better stroke on the ball. Wasn't that long ago he had a chance to get to the hill at 10 5. Looks as though he's going to get there now at 10 9. Yeah, rolled the cue ball through to play the nine in the top pocket just because it offers a bigger pocket. Why risk playing it in the side when you've got all the pocket where you can catch the rail? Aranas is indeed first to the hill at 10 racks to 9. He'll be yeah, if he's dead straight, he's going to leave himself a longer six, which he is. Yeah, all he could do was roll through. Now, where the six ball is, it's in that kind of place where when you're playing it down the rail, you can afford to hit the rail by some way up. And he's got it in the middle, so this this is definitely looking like we're going to go hill hill. We had an all Polish final in Kielce. 
where we were for the World Championship this year, back in 2012, when Karol Skowarski beat Mateusz Sniagotski. Since then, no more Polish finalists. A couple of semi-finalists, though. Skowarski again in 2014. Mieszko Fertunski last year. And maybe Viktor Zielinski is still going to make the last four here. We've got our first hill-hill finish of the World Masters. Somehow, it's 10-all. Good hit. That was a good hit. Well, I don't think we can be good in that, can we, Michael? Getting away, we won that. He's never going to forget his World Masters debut, whatever happens now, is he? Beat FSR yesterday, and an unbelievably eventful match today. I mean, this is just building up nicely. It really is. Okay, around us, this is your chance. Forget about what's gone on in the game of nine ball. The past is irrelevant. This is your chance. Doesn't matter what's happened in the match. Golden breaks, flukes, jump shots, good shots, bad shots. All that matters is you're on the hill and you get a chance to win the match. If he gets this shot right, this match should be over. This is the key shot. It's all about pace. Oh, this looks okay, Michael. The heave of the shoulders, the deep breath, stealing himself before that shot, and the full knowledge. These are some of the biggest minutes of his poor life so far. Looks like the eight ball will just drop in the left side pocket, which would mean when he gets to the seven, he can just roll through. If the eight ball is going in that side with ease, this is the big shot now. All he's got to do is get on the seven. Could play it two rails and then play the seven into the far left, the top left pocket. Let's see how he plays this shot. Okay, he's played one rail. Needs this to keep rolling. Yeah, that's okay. Good shot. Good shot. He's feeling it. And of course, this is what the game does to you. He's had to sit in his chair. He's watched his opponent struggle. And then all of a sudden, he's found himself in a hill hill. This is nine ball at its very best. This is what the game is about. It tests your metal. And every pool player in this situation would be like Aranus right now. And Zelinski back in that slumped position we saw earlier. He certainly made a fight of it. He had a lot of good fortune to help him along the way. But in the first Hill Hill finish of the tournament, James Aranis has come through on his debut. He's into the semi-finals of the World Masters. He's the first player from the Philippines to reach that stage for 11 years. What an afternoon it's been. He wins 11-10.